Hi, welcome to another episode of Hot Takes. King Charles and Keir Starmer will be visiting and attending the Commonwealth Summit uh, later this month. And when they get there, get there, they're going to be faced with demands from Commonwealth countries to make reparation to the sum of £200 billion pounds for Britain's part in the slave trade. This is clearly stupid. It's clearly unfeasible. The problem is, on his knees, Keir Starmer will probably capitulate and do it and bankrupt this country. He will take great delight in promising it because anything that can destroy Britain brings him pleasure. Now, I'm going to have to steal something I heard. Um, and Craig Houston will know this because I was there with him when we were discussing this sort of thing. Um, I was with Craig, as you know, on uh, Friday evening and I, I, I met a friend of his who gave a very, very pertinent answer to something. Uh, and it was a point well made. And he was talking about historical slavery and how Britain and Britons benefited. Uh, and this, this, this fellow who I met asked this question. He said, if you think about slavery, which we did not invent, slavery was invented back, you know, 20,000 years ago in the Middle East, the garden of civilization and all that. We didn't invent slavery and we weren't the slavers. The people who actually caught the slaves were black people who caught other black people and then sold them to the Arabs. That's where all the slaves came from, remember. And indeed, one of the richest men in history was a slaver who was black himself. And indeed, under the laws of slavery, weirdly enough, you could only be a slave for 10 years until that law was challenged in the American courts by a slave owner who he himself was black. He did not want to buy a slave and then have to free that slave after 10 years. These are things they don't teach you, of course, because it goes against the agenda. However, they want the reparations. But here's the argument I liked. He said, if you go back to, say, the mid 1800s, the Industrial Revolution was booming. You had some little old granny sitting in a flat. She was doing something with cotton, making some clothes and cutting cotton. What did she know about the slave trade? Nothing. Because you see, she didn't have a television. She didn't have a radio. None of them could read. There was no way of reading the newspaper. She had no way of knowing what was going on in the uh, in the world. And she was just given some cotton by Tut Mill owner or whatever. And she sat there and she worked her 12-hour days for a shilling a week to feed her bairns. She didn't care where the cotton came from. She didn't care where the cotton went. All she cared about were those couple of shillings a week that kept her children from starving. She was as much a slave as those in the fields picking cotton. Where's her reparation? And where's the reparation for Britain for ending the slave trade? For you see, the slave trade had existed for 10 or maybe 20,000 years. It went on all over the world all that time until one country said, you know what? It's wrong. And that country stopped it and it went on wars, campaigns. It fought war after war after war to end slavery. It put up its own money, its own military vessels, its own men who died in these wars. Where's our reparation? So when these countries say we want 200 billion from Britain. Britain says, no, we want 200 billion from you because we ended the slave trade. And if you truly want the money, 
Go to the Africans who sold slaves. Go to the Arabs who traded the slaves. And can we have the money back from the Italians for when the Romans came and enslaved us? And how about the Vikings? Can we have our money back from the Norwegians? That'd be great. And the Germans who came in, can we have our money from the Germans? There is no going back. There is no year dot. And let's face it, before the white man got to Africa, the Africans were slaving each other. Look at the pyramids. They didn't just fall from the sky. Slaves built them. The trouble is, the truth is awkward. The truth is terrible. And the truth is very, very highly edited to give an agenda, to give a story that certain groups want to push. But when you give them the unexpurgated truth, the actual truth, the real truth, they don't like it because it goes against what they want you to hear. So let's look at who are the real victims here. Is anyone in America, the black Americans, do they really want to be picked up en masse and returned to Africa whence they came? After all, it is their cultural home. Let's, let's put them back. And also, and here's the... Here's the really weird thing. All the black Americans who go, oh, yeah, no, we're, we're slaves, we're slaves, blah, 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 blah. Not, no, it's bullshit, it's bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Currently, and from those who've come in subsequently over the years, only about 10% of black Americans are descended from slaves. The other 90% never were. But they're going to grasp onto that because of the story, because of the agenda, because of what being a slave or the son or grandson great grandson etc means it gives them political power but they were never slaves and certainly in this country black people were never slaves there was never slavery in here the last time we had slavery in this country was when the romans were here or possibly the vikings afterwards so cut the bullshit cut the actual bullshit Here's a little interesting point. Only one American president did not have ancestors who were slavers. Does anyone know who it is, children? Yep. Donald Trump. The only American president whose family did not own slaves. Ain't that weird? But that's never part of the tale, is it? But Starmer, yeah, he can't wait to get the checkbook out. And fuck this country for £200 billion in reparations. Because regardless of the truth, destruction for him is king. Don't know what the king will say. Thanks very much. Bye.